So um, the next step is to motivate action. So with our online course, do we want people to just watch the videos? Or do we want to transform their lives? If our goal is to change their lives, then they must take action. There are different levels of action that will result in different levels of learning. And the level of action also corresponds to the willingness to invest and the price that they're willing to pay. So sometimes if you want a higher level of action, one of the best ways to filter just the people who will take action is just to charge more for your course. If it is a free course, or if it is a very low cost course, then the people who are going to join may be way less committed than somebody who like pays a high amount, hundreds of dollars for a course or over $100, they're going to be much more committed to getting results because they're like, I paid all this money, um, I need to get the result from it. Make sense? So the first level um, that I'm going to cover is called observe, um, the observe level. Um, and observe is interesting, um, because like, people will like typically watch a if the course is available for free, for example, they might be curious about a topic, uh, but they don't have immediate plans to use that information. Uh, perhaps that course is going to give them some new ideas for their business that they'll use in the future. Great, right? So the goal with observers is to get them to watch more videos. And this is where I found that shorter, like two to five minute videos tend to result in this feeling of accomplishment. You know, it motivates them to watch more videos. And it also makes it easier for them to go back to a particular spot in the course itself, because most um, learning management system or the courses, they will track like how many you've done. So they'll give you like a check mark for each one that you've completed. So instead of uh, searching back through like 15 or 30 minutes of video or like an hour long video, uh, you can just jump back to the last course that you finished. And so you, you'd only have to potentially redo maybe two to five minutes. So it makes the cost of coming back to the course very, very low. So your, your goal here is to reduce the cost of coming back to your course. Um, of course, you can also there are other ways that you can motivate, um, you can connect courses to a drip campaign, uh, which means that a new content is offered on a schedule, rather than everything being released at once, because if, if it's all released at once, maybe it's too overwhelming. If you just release a little bit every day or every week, um, that might be a good way to build a habit of, you know, doing your course. Uh, it's a really great way to motivate learners who um, have paid, but maybe they haven't yet started the course, which happens, right? Sometimes you pay for something, you think, oh, it's going to be really useful, and you forget about it. And then you never come back to the course. So you want to have the best experience possible. And if they don't complete the course, it's not really going to help them. So you, you definitely want to provide reminders. Um, and it is possible, so you know, to automate these actions, um, because you can find out who clicked on a link um, using an email automation tool like MailChimp. So MailChimp will tell you, oh, this person did or did not click the link. If they didn't click the link within a certain number of days, then just send them a reminder email. Just tell them like, hey, there's this other uh, part of the course, or maybe that's where the drip cam campaign comes in. By the way, I've got something new for you. Uh, go and check this out. If you haven't checked it out already, you can just catch up. It's really easy. This is how you do it. Um, you're not trying to guilt anybody, <laughs> you know, it's just saying, oh, hey, how come you didn't take the course? I mean, people are, um, th they are motivated in different ways. And you can even extrinsically motivate observers uh, to offer them a reward, such as a badge if they complete all of the videos. Uh, so in my video um, funnels course, I offer a badge to anyone who just completes all the videos. If you just watch all the videos, here is a little badge that says video uh, funnel secrets. And then uh, you, you can include that in, say, a resume or a LinkedIn profile. Uh, but it's not personalized. So it's not it doesn't have your name on it or anything. It just says like, hey, here's the badge. And I figured like, it's a good way to to get people like give them something. I mean, it's it's just a digital badge. Uh, but you never know, like you, you never know what is going to motivate people. So just something simple, like having a badge can make a, a big difference. It's not necessarily that observing is bad. It just means that maybe they don't know how they're going to use it right now. They just want to learn. Um, and maybe they don't want to do the course or they're not motivated. That's okay. It's not here to like, we're not here to judge them. Um, 
how do we encourage them to watch more videos? Because they'll, if they observe more, then it's going to lead them more towards those other levels of action. Make sense? Okay. So reflect. Um, I find reflect to be very interesting. Uh, you know, you don't need a lot in order to get people to reflect. So even if they are not going to use what they learned in the course immediately, people still want this way. Um, and they're going to remember more uh, if they reflect on what they just learned. Um, so I mean, during a live stream, I can ask, how would you solve this problem? What would you do if you were in this same situation? Uh, but what can you do if your co course is not offered live? So for example, it's a video that you previously recorded that you wanted to turn into a course. Uh, what can you what are the, the options for you? Well, there's multiple ways to use a multiple choice uh, question. Uh, but I've found that negative answers tend to require a little bit more thinking. Uh, so for example, I created a question for my video finals course uh, that required the audience to look at a picture and tell me, well, what is um, not something like what is something that does not need to be improved in this video? And so you have to look at it and you go, hmm, is it like it's not bright enough? Is, is it like he's too far away from the microphone? Is his face too small? Um, all of these things or is the is the um, you know, is, is there too much stuff? Like, I don't know. Right. Like, but it's good because it requires you to to think like, oh, yes, these ones, I all agree. Of course, I need to do these things. But then it makes you think a little bit more critically a negative answer. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's like, which of the following is not a good a good practice? Which of the following is not a a good way of learning online courses? What which which of the following is not a good thing to do with video funnels? Those are examples of ways that you can ask that question. Um, and I think the, the key here is like, this is not like a curriculum. I'm not really trying to teach people how, like, how, like how to do a course, like people are doing this because they want to. And so the key is like, you want to make the total number of questions fairly short. Um, you know, people don't need to know everything in order to be able to act on what they had learned. And so this is, this is helpful. So the key is if they miss something, um, they can always go back and learn it again. And that's one of the reasons why for what I teach, I try to um, motivate maybe ideally, like one question per topic. And so usually like that, that topic takes like 10 or 15 minutes to cover all the aspects. And I only ask one question out of out of everything. When we are referring to uh, reflecting, covering one uh, question per topic is is really, it's really a simple way of doing it. Uh, I love creating scenarios where um, and asking them to think about the best solution and providing an explanation for why that is the best solution. Uh, I know that this is more effort on the part of the 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 person who is teaching the lesson. But I feel that it's it's very important, actually, um, if you are able to to do it, um, like if you are able to do this, it makes a huge difference. And so because it, it helps you know who is like at what point are they? What is their level of learning uh, with respect to this topic? And I find that that is that is hugely beneficial. So I love like typically like I'm, I try to motivate um, the work of going and doing the questions uh, by providing a personalized certificate for everyone who is able to answer above a certain threshold it could be like 80 percent and uh, there's a lot of systems like uh, learn dash that i'm using right now that are very good at, at doing this and i really like the approach used by duolingo where you can go directly to the quiz you don't have to take any of the the, the actual video lessons and you can test your knowledge first um, and that's really powerful because then you can go back and watch only the videos that you don't understand yet. So every learner starts with a different level of prior knowledge. So why not start with only the videos that cover the gaps in what you already know? So that's one of the reasons why I love this like exam, you know, thing. It's like, 
start with a test, right? Like the, I think there's some Edu protocols that cover this exact same uh, method. <clears throat> and I think it's powerful because there's so much that you come in with. There's so much knowledge that you, you know already. So I, I love that. The last um, step, and I want to that I want to cover, and it's it's an important one, is about creation. So you want people to be able to not only reflect, but you want them to also be able to create. So the best way to learn is to create something from what you've learned. And if you were to offer assignments, I'd recommend that every single assignment is something that the learner would have to do anyways to achieve their goal. So learners may not have to do like a, they don't they don't have time to do like assignments specific to just your course. But if you make it clear that these are the exact steps that you'll need in order to achieve your goal, it'll help to motivate those who are serious about transformation. Like for example, I'm a huge fan of uh, peer learning. And when learning about sales and closing from Dan Lok, uh, I had found that role plays with other students, especially those who are more advanced in the skill than you are, is massively beneficial uh, to know where you currently stand and how you need to improve. Uh, it's it kind of similar to like sparring with a higher belt level in a dojo. I want to practice the skill before going out and using it in real life. And so uh, for creative work, I encourage creating this safe and welcoming community for celebrating creative work and encouraging one another. Now, practically, you could do this obviously in any course, like you could do it inside LearnDash. But I've found that eh, social media, such as Facebook groups, are powerful because people don't need to change their habits in order to be a part of your community. And that's the biggest problem is that, yes, it works, but here's the problem. You've got to like join some new like online community inside Coursera and like who, who has time for that? Like they have to go and do something else. But if you're already just browsing Facebook anyways, like it's, it's just right there. Like your community is ever present and it'll appear in your feed every once in a while. It's easy in comparison to the amount of effort of logging into a new system. So sometimes a live critique of creative work by the instructor can be a very powerful way of learning about what you can improve. So for example, um, ask learners to submit their LinkedIn profile and provide them with feedback directly. Uh, this helps like quickly skip all of those initial steps on the like on on your course. And it only deals with the parts uh, that matters the most. Uh, and your, your students or your learners do not know yet. Does that making sense? Like you can you can skip everything. I'm a huge fan of like just in time learning means why do I got to learn everything from like the basics all the way up? You don't need to, right? Like you can motivate it by just having modules and say, here's the test for this module. If you understand it, just do the test, pass it and then move on to the next thing. You don't need to go and watch all the videos. What's the point? Right? If you know this stuff, like I don't want to waste your time. Um, don't waste their time by giving them an online course that, uh, you know, teaches them a bunch of stuff that they already know. 